Hi, I've just finished creating my optimization courses, which is going to give you some ideas about how you can get more performance out of your Unity games. Now, during the time that I put this course together, I learned a lot of things myself. And I have to say that the way that I've been doing things in the past isn't necessarily the fastest way of doing things. And yes, they do work, but they aren't going to get as much performance out of Unity as you might like. So what I've done here is just put together maybe five things that I've been teaching that could be done a little bit better and hopefully it'll help you to do better as well. Now, before we jump in and look at these five different areas of where you can actually get extra performance out of your Unity projects, we need to quickly have a look at what a performance budget is. Basically, it's a little table of all the subsystems that run on the CPU and the GPU and how much time you're going to allocate to each. So you might be used to saying, oh, my game runs at 30 frames per second or it runs at 60 frames per second. But when it comes down to breaking those frames per second up for each of the subsystems, it becomes a little bit difficult. So instead of talking in frames per second, we talk in milliseconds that we actually allocate per each of these systems. And for 60 frames per second, it actually comes down to 16 milliseconds per frame. Okay, so keep that in mind as we now have a look at these tips. The first tip is using get component. And we all use get component to get components that are on our game object so that we can bring them into a script and then we can use them. For example, we might want to grab hold of the rigid body that is on a character so that we can then move it forward. Now, this is great and it works really well, but it doesn't perform very well. So instead of running get component all over the place, it's much better if you actually cache the object instead, which means that you want to store it in like a global variable or global property, and you want to assign the value of that property via the inspector before you even press play. Okay, so the key issue here is that get component is quite heavy processor wise. So it's going to take up some of your budget for your performance. Whereas if you assign it ahead of time, okay, sure you're going to use up a little bit more memory, but you won't get that performance overhead as far as using the CPU when you run a get component because you can just use that particular component instead. Next, we have the two ways that you can compare the tag that is on a game object. Now, we do this quite often when we've encountered a physics collision or done a ray cast or something to see if the object that we've actually hit is a particular object. In this case, we're looking for the tag for enemy. Now, I do it this way quite a lot because it's just easy to do and you don't have to overthink it. But did you know that dot tag is actually more expensive than using the Unity method compare tag? In fact, compare tag is actually five times faster than using a dot tag for comparison. And using compare tag actually doesn't generate anything in memory that requires garbage collection later on. Oh, it's just so easy to use instantiate and destroy when you want a game object and then you want to get rid of a game object. Or at least it's easy once you figure out all the syntax for instantiate, which I think took me about three years of teaching before I knew it off by heart. Anyway, it's a really bad idea and you don't want to do it in the main game loop if you don't have to. So a better way is to actually use pooling. And pooling is a way to create a whole cache of game objects right at the beginning of the game and then just to use them by turning them on and off as you need them. And it totally removes the instantiation and destroy and puts the instantiation of all of those objects right at the beginning of the game where they're not going to interrupt the gameplay. Whenever you want to trigger an animation or set the value of a parameter, it's very logical to use the string that represents that particular value, in this case forward, inside of your script because it just makes it so much more readable. But did you know that using a string is actually half as efficient as using an integer? 
So instead of using a string every time you want to set a float or something in your animator, you create a string to hash, maybe in the start or an awake, assign it to an int and then use that int when you go to set your parameter for your animator. And last but not least, did you know that you can use multiple canvases when you create a Unity project to display your user interface? The reason being is that when you put items onto a canvas, it does this batching process where it has to basically process all of the meshes that belong to the canvas, the ones that are the children to it. Every time you interact with your UI, it has to go away and regenerate all of those meshes again. So it actually has to do a re-batching. And this can take up a fair bit of processing if you're doing it all the time. If you have a really fancy UI, then it's a really good idea to have more than one canvas and put items that you're never actually going to interact with, so they'll never change, onto one canvas, which basically becomes a static canvas. And then any items that do change, put them onto another canvas again and then you're reducing the amount of work that a canvas has to do every time something changes and you have to regenerate those batches of meshes. Now if you found these tips handy and you want to learn more and you want to learn how to use the Unity Profiler in depth then make sure you check out my optimization course which is going to give you so much hands-on experience with the Unity Profiler that you'll be able to profile your games in your sleep.